This game features some disturbing concepts and imagery. If this is a concern for your mental health, please tread carefully. Wait, this is a base... This is just one long line that's a base 64 message, isn't it? Okay, yeah, this is just full text. <clears throat> okay, this is a whole story. Um... Is this true for all of them? No, no, that's just Yuri's. Only Yuri's. See, I didn't open Yuri's file before. I opened the other files. I, I know you can't see right now. That's fine. I was I was leaving it off while I was bringing up the web page and stuff. But this is Natsuki's file. This this looks more like a uh, binary file or whatever, right? But uh, this was Yuri's file, and that's full, full on text. I think Monica's was also just like binary stuff. Yeah. Although it does have this at the top, which is somewhat suspect. Oh, wait, this is a picture. This is a picture. Okay, was it always like this? Let me let me look at my uh, backed up Monica character file. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, they, they'd always had that. We just didn't uh, didn't notice it before, because it's like in the top left of my vision. I only was looking down here. But uh, yeah, so that's um, that's Monica's character file. That appears to be the uh, the crack. The portal to another world, if you will. That could easily be further encoded information. Doesn't look like a QR code, but it looks like blocks of uh, dots that could translate into text. It could just be static. Could just be static. But... And uh, Yuri's file is uh, a like story or like really huge like a, it's a lot of text. It's thirty kilobytes of text. <laughs> um. Well, let's at least take a quick uh, zoom in on here. Don't see a lot of repeating patterns. There's nothing else we're seeing is terribly meaningful in any of that, right? I don't think so. Like, I was just kind of idly wondering if anything looked like rope or a knot, you know? Uh, there's definitely other ways information could be encoded there. We would spend a lot of time for probably little game trying to decode. But, uh, well, I kind of want to try, like, one specific thing, because there's kind of a, um... Uh, a, a dot pattern based code and if we could figure out the standard size of that we could at least do like the first like four or something and see if it looks like it's spelling anything out do we want to do that now or a little bit later probably a little bit later but we'll go ahead and copy the png file i guess she can just hang out with happy thoughts what if i I mean, if that's a PNG file... I mean, so that's a thing, but I, I'm, 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 I'm interested in this other thing real quick. <laughs> I'm interested in this other thing real quick. And yeah, we still got Yuri, but that's like, that's a whole thing. We've got to like read a whole thing for uh, that. But uh, I spelled Sayori wrong. God bless it. <laughs> Sayorio. Okay.
Like, I assume this isn't gonna do anything, but... Okay, this is not bad. I mean, if I tried that earlier, maybe. That might have still been from the fact I technically just deleted Monica's file by renaming it. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> exactly, Layla said. Natsuki asked me to uh, to help out Yuri, and then we're trying to practice necromancy. That is that is exactly what's going on here. So I think that was just from the Monica situation, right? It was only partially your fault. No, this is because we have a file in here named Sayori. It may not matter what file it is, but this is because we have the Sayori file in here. It was only partially our fault, guys. All right, uh, once more to the bridge? Probably not, there's nothing the third time for Monica's, at least there didn't seem to be. Yeah. Um, I guess we'll proceed a little bit in the game, and then we're going to read Yuri's, like, it's, it's really big. See, like, it's, it's a lot of text. It's a whole freaking, it's like, a, it's a full short story. It's 30 kilobytes of text, right? It's, it's not, uh, it's not short. Don't let her down. This poem means a lot to me. Read it carefully. <clears throat> so, we, we kind of got our answer immediately when we asked if, uh... If other people, like, can read her poems or interrupt her while she's talking about things via poems. Yeah, we should probably look a little closer at Natsuki's file. I changed my mind. Ignore everything you just read. There's no point in trying to do anything. It's Yuri's own fault that she's so unlikable. Alright, so that definitely comes off as Monica. Like, the, the assumption is always Monica, but like, there's still some lingering pieces that like, Monica's asking for help effectively, but it might just be other people asking through uh, through the game wherever they can access it, which is sometimes Monica, right? But like she's she's been talking about uh, like talking down Yuri this whole time, right? And uh, why bother doing anything? You say. Um. This does kind of make me want to uh, read Yuri's message before- also, this needs to be saved, right? Clearly we need another lovely thumbnail for our collection! <laughs> uh, we, we've, we've got so many memories now. <laughs> Once again, talking to me. I mean, do we want a consistent voice for pasteover? I've been doing like, whatever. We'll just go with what we've been doing. Can you hear me, twin? If you would just spend more time with Monica, all these problems would go away. All right, I think I want to read Yuri's story before before Yuri might go away. That's uh, that's, that's how I feel about uh, the situation. Um, so yeah, we're going to uh, to take a uh, a break here, folks, and uh, cliffhanger a little bit, all of that, I guess. Every it's always a cliffhanger. It's always uh. All right, we are back. Yeah. Who knows what will happen on the next episode, huh? Um, alright, so this is Yuri's character file. 
If you found this note in a small wooden box with a heart on it, then congratulations! You are probably the first person to read this. I didn't really plan on sharing this with anybody, but for some reason I think it's exciting that somebody is out there. A complete stranger. Uh, that, yeah, that will come across this note and read my story. Someone I will never meet, sharing such a personal bond with me. I'm fascinated that either one of us could die, even as soon as tomorrow, with the other being completely clueless to the fact. To you, my entire life is within this note, and so I will live for as long as your memory can carry me. Writing this, I'm wondering if that makes you feel fascinated or violated. It's so exciting. I'm sorry if my story is a bit disorganized, but I'd like to get it down while it's still fresh in my mind. First, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I'm a first-year college girl, and have led, by most standards, a pretty unspectacular life up to this point. Uh, I grew up in an upper-middle-class school district with decent teachers. I did track in middle school and of some of high school, and I've had two boyfriends. Now I'm studying for a career in occupational therapy because I feel the field is undervalued and provides tremendous help to people. I'm giving you this background because there's this strange misconception that if you want to kill someone, then you're either sick in the head or you have anger management issues. But it's very apparent that I don't fall into either of these categories. It's true that most murder cases are in a domestic setting where someone loses control of their anger or something. But the thing is that those people kill under provocation, whether by a single outburst or by some slow-burning series of misfortunes. Those people kill because in that brief moment, they want a specific someone, for a specific reason, to be hurt or killed. It got, it got, got creepy faster than I thought it was going to there. It took quite a turn. What I'm talking about is wanting to kill someone for no specific reason, maybe just to see what it's like. Do you ever get that? I wouldn't know how others feel, because it's not something I ever talked about, but I've been curious about what it's like to kill someone ever since I was a child. Not killing anyone in particular, just a random person. It's always just fascinated me that if I put my mind to it, I can approach anyone and in five minutes they would be completely gone from this earth. But I've never done so for a couple of reasons. First of all, for most of my life, it was logistically impossible for me to do it without getting caught. I only got my driver's license a couple years ago, and even then, the preparations would take too much time, definitely stirring suspicion. It was only once I started college that I realized this was no longer an obstacle. Another reason is that I was afraid of causing harm to too many people. You might laugh reading that at how hypocritical it sounds, but let me explain. Why should I feel a bad about killing someone if they're too dead to care? Who would I be feeling bad for? Contrarily, it's the grief of the living that I'd rather not be responsible for. Because of this, I knew it would take a good deal of research before finding a suitable person to kill, and I've never had the means to do so. Again, until I started college. And now, having just experienced it, I'd say it was pretty satisfying in the end. Something I would try again? Eh, probably not, since my curiosity's already been satisfied. It really wouldn't work a second time. But anyway, if by any chance you're also curious to kill someone, then you're welcome to take notes. I started a hobby of people watching soon after I entered college. People watching is interesting to me because it's taking one of the infinite extras in your life and turning them into a main character, without them knowing, of course. It's so easy to forget that every single one of the hundreds of strangers you pass every day has a life story as deep and complex as your own. One thing I noticed about people watching, and wanting to kill someone, is that you are in more constant awareness of this. When I find a person to observe, their story slowly becomes more clear to me over time, gaps being filled. It really is amazing. There's not really that many creepy songs on the playlist in general, so the playlist is never going to be appropriate, but I guess this is appropriate for Doki, because the music's always inappropriate. 
I usually went to the grocery stores on weekends and looked around in people's shopping carts. If I saw something that interested me, I decided to observe the person for a little bit. Of course, since my goal was to find someone to kill, I ruled out anyone who had children or a partner with them. Wedding rings were another telltale sign. So maybe once a weekend, I would find someone who fit my criteria, at which point I would follow them home and note their address. From there, it became incredibly easy to investigate a little bit more. Most people have normal work hours, meaning I could spend afternoons going through their mail or looking around in their house. I repeated this with several people, and had one close call, but for varying reasons I didn't really feel satisfied enough with any of them to kill them. I started getting a bit impatient and thought I might just settle for killing the man named Devin, even though I didn't really want to kill someone wealthy. But then I came across someone new, someone who just felt perfect. The feeling only strengthened as I investigated her further, and I knew that she would be the one for me to kill. There's a lot of story left on this, too. I I'm looking back over here real quick. Does Jfif mean anything? As a, like, does any of this look like a, uh, a header type for, like, JPEG or, I don't know, TIFF? Um, I don't think it would be a bitmap, but, uh... Jfif is the header for JPEG. Okay. There we go. What exactly am I looking at here? I think colors look inverted. I mean, we could do that real quick. Oh, that's information. I thought I used to be invert. Uh, it's not particularly uh, better. Uh, we've got like kind of a tendril thing going on. So there is that. Got kind of a vague, uh, Elder God feel. Like, all sorts of, like, tentacles and stuff going on over here. Oh, that's full screen. Where's the, uh... Oh, vertical flip. We got, like, uh, lips over here. And over here. Yeah, this is a face. So, it's a, it's a face splayed across... To, yeah, so, there it is. Yeah, it's a face that's uh, kind of stretched and split on the image over here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it does look like uh, a texture. You can make a mask and wear her face! It doesn't uh, look like any of the in-game characters, though, right? Yeah, so putting it together obviously does not make it coherent, because again, it, it's not meant to be wrapped around a uh, flat object. <laughs> that's, uh... <laughs> that's, uh... That's what it is, I guess. It is what it is. Um, I don't know. So I'm going back to, um... What I was calling Yuri's story, but, um, the story. <sighs> Didn't really sat feel satisfied with it. Either. Knew she would be the perfect one for me to kill. A young looking woman I met at the grocery store, as per usual. She was doing some light shopping with a basket. Her hair was wavy and dark brown. Sitting in elegantly on her slumped shoulders and surrounding her tired-looking face. Her bare fingers told, she, told me she might be single, but beyond that, my gut was almost certain of it. This woman just seemed... Soplin, really. It's not a word I know. I guess I felt a greater acuity for the personal lives of strangers ever since I started my people-watching. But the way she carried herself, I just got the feeling that if she suddenly died, nobody would be around to miss her. Of course, I still wanted to investigate her a bit. 
So they're using some, uh, some fancy words here. Mm. Oh, so plain. There's just no, uh, space, I guess. It's missing a space. Okay. I followed my usual routine of checking out her place during her work hours. I learned immediately from her mail that her name is Linda Watson. Linda lived in a quiet apartment complex, her mailbox easily accessible right outside her door. Instead of quickly shuffling through it, I decided I could take her mail back to my dorm and return it before she was finished with work. She only lived about 15 minutes from me. I did some research and learned how to open and reseal the envelopes without damaging them, which took some technique along with a hairdryer, rubbing alcohol, and Q-tips. This made it easy for me to learn a little bit more about her. Linda was a 33-year-old woman who worked for a small accounting firm. I'd rather not name the place outright. Her birthday was December 11th, which coincidentally was approaching in a couple weeks. <laughs> I also managed to find a bank statement that gave me a nice look into how she's been spending her past month. It was at this point I realized my assessment of Linda Watson was ex and, uh, as an extremely plain woman was pretty spot on, because there was absolutely nothing interesting in the list. A crypto old navy, a bunch of Starbucks, something about $40 from Amazon, no restaurants, no movies, nothing would really imply that she was spending any time socializing. That aside, I also found a cooking magazine, so I guess she was into cooking. Apartments are harder to break into than suburban homes, because there are fewer doors and windows. Every time I got Linda's mail, I would check the front door, the windows, and back, but they were always locked. This was a bit frustrating, because I was really interested in getting into her house. So I came up with a sort of plan that I thought would be fun, even if it didn't work. Last Saturday, I visited Linda Watson's apartment complex as I would on weekdays. The difference is that this time, I wanted her to be home. I thought it'd be interesting to have a conversation with her. If I got lucky, I could take advantage of the situation to discreetly unlock a window from the inside. So I walked up to her door wearing nothing warmer than a light sweatshirt and knocked. The adrenaline rush was crazy. I was afraid I might screw something up. The door opened and in front of me stood Linda Watson, exactly as I remembered her from the grocery store. It was at that moment, making eye contact for the first time, that I realized I was running the risk of beginning to care about this person. As selfish as it is, I couldn't kill a person I cared about, even if it's a 33-year-old woman standing in a doorway with a slightly perplexed look on her face, giving me a reserved hello. Arms crossed from the cold, I shyly returned Linda's greeting. I explained that I was walking my dog near the woodsy area behind the back of her apartment, and that he had gotten away. I had been looking for my dog for an hour and was wondering if Linda may have seen him roaming about. Of course, Linda sympathetically apologized for the situation and that she couldn't be of use to me, but that she would keep an eye out. I wore a defeated expression in response, apologizing in return for troubling her. It somehow went exactly as I had hoped. Linda invited me inside to warm up a bit with some coffee. I outwardly hesitated before accepting her offer. Although on the inside, I wanted to jump through the door and hug her for cooperating so well. And that's how Linda Watson ended up with a 19-year-old girl next to her on the couch. Who knows if it was just a nice gesture, or if she really has no better way to spend her Saturdays than talking to some kid she just met. Who happens to be interested in killing her? Um, I'll read a little bit more and then do a little more game and then read a little bit more, I guess, since this doesn't currently seem to be directly related to anything? Linda soon learned that my name is Maria. It's not. And that I attend the nearby community college. I don't. I was a little bit nervous that she would ask too many questions because I didn't have many answers prepared. I was able to steal the conversation towards her, and she was pretty happy to talk. I asked what she does, and she told me that she works for the accounting firm I already knew about, communicating with outside clients and keeping records. I told her I was pretty nervous about growing up. She told me to enjoy college and to make lots of friends because there's less opportunity once you start working. When I asked if she was married or anything, she laughed. Of course I knew she wasn't married, but I wanted to hear more about her love life. She said that she doesn't currently have a boyfriend. I guess she's at least had boyfriends, but who knows how long ago. When asked about her kid, about kids, she said she doesn't want them until she gets a better job. 
Top of that, she told me that her family has a history of some genetic diseases, such as arthritis and depression, which she is afraid to give to her kids. It's funny that she mentioned that, because when I asked to use her bathroom, I noticed a tube of prescription pills in the sink. It was labeled Deluxetine, which I looked up later and discovered that it is in fact an antidepressant. I had a joking thought that maybe by killing her I'd be doing her a favor, but quickly decided I was a terrible person for coming up with that. Uh, thanks for at least acknowledging that much. Good god. The rest of this visit was pretty dull. We talked about food and some other mundane stuff before I eventually made an excuse to leave. I didn't get the chance to unlock a window or anything like that, but I didn't really feel the need to go through her apartment anymore. As early as the drive back to my dorm, I was already thinking about how I would best like to kill Linda Watson. Alright, well, let's go from one pile of creep to the other pile of creep, I suppose. Uh, if you would just spend more time with Monica, all these problems would go away. Yuri and I are too messed up for someone as wonderful as you. Just think of Monica from now on. Just Monica. Just Monica. Just Monica. Uh, let's go check in on the other timeline real quick. I bet it's not going to be terribly different, but um, <laughs> let's, let's take a look at the other timeline. Uh, destiny, disaster, electricity, Exc oh, excitement, sir. Uh, massacre, uh, entropy. We got two of these now. What if I don't click one this time? <laughs> Captive. <gasps> tried picking Sayori words, but that Sayori words weren't captive. Uh, everyone, I just picked the word captive, and at the bottom left of the screen, Sayori jumped up from off screen. Playground? I'm, I'm now thinking of words that fit um, Sayori's situation the most. They'll probably still all be Yuri words, but... Otherwise... Nope! Graveyard is Sayori too! Cage is not, though. Is there enough words to get her a majority? All right, let's start making notes of uh, words that fit. I mean, Sayori and Monica both have uh, brown hair. You think that was, uh, was Monica? It could be. Monica fits captive too. Remember, we were um, theorizing that, like, because Monica doesn't have full control and she's trying to communicate and doesn't, like, yeah, like, that fits with kind of the, the double entity uh, concept again. It's, you, th you think it's a red ribbon, not white? That's really the distinguishing difference here, right? I mean, happy thoughts emphasizes the red ribbon. Let's see, so this is the same. I've been waiting for you. Continue reading. Best tea. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's different. Seriously, what's gotten into you lately? M me N nothing it is it really that bad 
See, it is something. Uh, I'll get over it. It's not, not even anything noteworthy. I, I've just been feeling a little on edge lately. I, anyway, we, we don't need to talk about it. Well, I just felt like I needed to bring it up. It's not like I really care or anything. Let's take a, uh, a closer look at uh, that hair situation here. Cap. Yeah. That is distinctly white on that one. That was Graveyard and Captive. <laughs> Remember when we were trying to, like, in the first loop to pick words uh, that we thought Monica would like the most and it didn't, uh, didn't matter? Oh man. I'm the last one here again. Well, Twin just walked in too. Who were you practicing piano again? Yeah. <laughs> he must have a lot of determination, starting this club and trying to make time for piano. It motivates me to work hard for the festival and... Um... Right. I, I forgot. Um, about that, Natsuki. We were all talking yesterday, and... Music's about to cut. Nope, nope. Yeah, it's, 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 it's really hard to predict when things are going to stay benign or not. Well, we decided that we would like to support the festival as well. However, I understand how you feel about not wanting the club to change. I think we all kind of feel that way. So as long as we're all working together, this club will never become something we don't want. Um, also, if you help us out with the festival, then I'll buy you a new manga. There's an extra ha there. So we've, we've said that Natsuki doesn't laugh very much. And every single time Yuri, Monica, and Twin laugh, it's ah ha ha. And this one has a third ha. <laughs> Sorry, that last part was really funny. It, look, I did some thinking about yesterday. I was a little more hostile than I meant to be. I guess I really felt threatened or something. But I know this is something we're doing together. Another new member wouldn't hurt as long as they're cool. This actually makes sense now. <laughs> it didn't make sense on the other timeline, really. I guess another girl would be nice this time. But more importantly, I would hate to see the event suck just because I chose to back out. I'm a pro, you know. So I'm gonna help too, and we'll make sure it's done right. Thank goodness. Isn't that great, Monica? M Monica? Let's, 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 let's check those files again, by the way. So, yeah, nothing, uh, nothing else, uh, new there. Monica vanished and showed back up again. Uh, yeah, that's wonderful. It wouldn't be the same without you, Natsuki. Anyway, Twinch, what do you want to do today? I was thinking we could... Okay, then we go back into, uh, already have plans. Um, do we hunt for more special words? I don't think we're gonna find... I mean, I guess if we find a plurality, we would need, a uh, seven? If we could find seven words. We could also try the same words, um, earlier to see if they, uh, brought Monica hopping on the poetry every time or only recently. We tried dark. Pain? I mean, there's captive again. Oh, so captive was Yuri here. Okay. So early on, she doesn't show up. She doesn't 
have enough control to be a part of the uh, the system, but she's slowly getting more control, maybe? So this is day three again. Uh, empty. I mean, not the, uh, not what we expected, but, um, interesting. <laughs> 